Hi, my name is Quirain, and welcome to this Bits of Q tutorial about requires expressions in C++. In our previous video, we saw that we can constrain templates, such as this sum function template, by using concepts. This looks something like this. Or, if you prefer to use the shorthand version, you can even write this. If you haven't seen the concepts video, I recommend watching it first, as required expressions and concepts are often used together. There's a link in the description. Just to make our story complete, I want to introduce a second way to constrain templates to only a certain category of types using so-called requires clauses. And yes, I said class here, not expression. C++ would not be C++ if they didn't decide to reuse the new requires keyword for two different things, just to make life more complicated. The requires keyword can be used either after the function parameters or after the template parameters to constrain the types that may be deduced for the template argument. I personally use them to impose ad hoc constraints that I won't need anywhere else, as you don't need to first define the concepts when you use a requires class. Just like with concepts, we use constraint expressions to describe how the requires class constrains the parameters. In this case, I'm using the isArithmetic type trait from the standard library to ensure that our sum function only accepts arithmetic types. But in the end, no matter whether you use concepts or requires clauses to constrain the input of our sum function, limiting our sum to only numbers doesn't necessarily make sense, if indeed our sum operation is nothing more than a call to the addition operator on A and B. Then clearly we should be able to handle all inputs that provide this addition operator. This brings us into the domain of requires expressions, the C++ 20 way of describing interface requirements. You are dealing with a requires expression if the requires keyword is used in a Boolean context, like the constrained expression of a concept. The requires expression is an expression of type bool. Its syntax resembles that of a normal function. In parentheses, you can specify a parameter list separated by commas, just like in a function declaration. And, just like in a function definition, the requires sequence, which is specified in the braces, is a list of semicolon separated requirements on the template parameters, possibly specified indirectly through the parameters from the parameter list. We'll look at some examples of both in a bit. Lastly, the requires expression evaluates to true if and only if all of the constraints are satisfied. So, let's make things a bit more concrete. There are four types of requirements which can be used in the requires expression. First, there's the simple requirement, which is any expression that does not start with the requires keyword. For our summable concept, we can use such a requirement by first specifying two parameters, just like in a normal function, that are based on the template argument. We'll call them A and B. Then, as a simple requirement, we specify that the expression A plus B should be valid. And this is exactly what a simple requirement is all about. Checking whether an expression is valid C++ and compiles. The expression is not evaluated and no guarantees are given on the output. If we do want to describe a constraint on the output, for example that if you add up A and B, which are both of type T, that the result is also of type T, then you need what's called a compound requirement. A compound requirement always starts with the expression itself in braces, followed optionally by the noaccept keyword to indicate that the expression should be marked as noaccept, and again, optionally, an arrow followed by the constraint on the return type. So, if we want to specify that a type is summable, we can use a compound requirement to indicate that both A plus B should be a valid expression, as well as that it should return something of type T. Here we are using the std same as concept from the standard library, for the return type constraint. For the third type of requirement, we'll use a different motivational example. The type requirement is used to specify that a name should be a type. We can use it to, for example, create a has value type concept, which constrains the template arguments to those that specify a value type member indicating a type. Note that we left out the optional parameter list in the requires expression, as you do not need any parameters to express our requirement. The last and perhaps most complex type of requirement, is the nested requirement. Nested requirements start with the requires keyword, followed by a constraint expression. They can be used to specify additional constraints in terms of local parameters. For example, if you want to create a concept for types that are a pointer to summable types, the type category which we defined in our previous concept, we want to say something, not about our template argument t, but about the type you get when dereferencing t. In this case, we can use the nested requirement requires summable remove pointer t of t. This verifies both that the expression is valid as well as that summable 
remove pointer of t evaluates to true. It is important to emphasize this difference. If I would have used the simple requirement summable remove pointer of t instead of the nested requirement, it would only verify if summable remove pointer of t was valid 0 plus. It would not verify that it evaluates to true and as such behave very differently. To make it a bit more concrete, if t is a pointer to an integer, then both the simple and nested requirement evaluate to true, since if you remove the pointer, the int type remains, which is indeed summable. If, however, t is a pointer to a vector of int, then we see that the nested requirement correctly evaluates to false, as clearly a vector is not a summable type. The simple requirement, however, incorrectly evaluates to true, as it only checks whether the expression summable remove pointer of t is valid zero plus, not if it evaluates to true. Although requires expressions are often used with concepts, I wanted to remind you that because requires expressions are of type bool, they can also be used outside of concepts. For example, if I write a generic function that accepts any type of container, I might want to check if the add member function is supported, and if so, prefer that over the subscript operator. This can be achieved with a simple requirement in a const expert if statement. Now my function will prefer the add member, which usually does range checks on the given index, but still default to the subscript operator if the add member is not available for the given container type. So, let's summarize what we talked about. There are four types of requires expressions. The simple requirement tests whether an expression is valid. The compound requirement checks whether an expression is valid, but also lets you impose a constraint on the return type or specify that the expression should not throw an exception. The type requirement allows you to specify that a certain name should be a type. And lastly, the nested requirement checks whether a certain constrained expression is valid and evaluates to true. That's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more. Thanks for watching.